Today, we're in York, in one of the largest cathedrals in Northern Europe. That is York Minster, and this is the Everything Electric Show. If you like the Everything Electric Show, you will love our Everything Electric exhibitions around the world. Next up, Everything Electric Australia. And Everything Electric London. Get your tickets today. Historic buildings are balancing heritage and climate action and turning to renewable energy. But is it really possible to preserve a historic piece of architecture and make it more sustainable to run? And is it sacrilege to deck out these centuries-old buildings with modern technology? And does it even work anyway? Which brings us here to York and its 1,396-year-old minster. Now these buildings are very expensive to run. Staffing, heating and lighting cost York Minster around £30,000 a day. Yet these buildings bring enormous financial and social benefits to both the local community and tourists. And just like in newer, smaller buildings, renewable energy systems reduce energy bills and the overall impact these enormous buildings have. So tell us about what you've done here in York Minster so far. We've been working on a plan for the precinct for the past six years. So the, the Minster, we're just seeing a tiny part of the estate it sits in. It actually sits in seven hectares of land. So we've created our own bespoke planning policy, which was adopted as a neighbourhood plan by City of York Council last June um, to bring the precinct well into the 21st century. So sustainability sits at the heart of the plan. And so in this plan, I imagine there, you know, we're talking about really historic, beautiful buildings. I imagine there has been a little bit of opposition along the way. Tell us about that. Yes, well, the uh, neighbourhood plan regulations are set within the Localism Act, so how you work with the local community to set development within their area. So we had 32 weeks of consultation over four years, so the local community will be very much at the heart of developing the plan and which has de-risked the future planning applications as we begin to make major changes within the precinct. This is an incredibly complex part of York City Centre, as you can imagine. So we own 53 properties and 52 of them are listed. Three of them are Grade 1 listed, including the magnificent Minster behind us. So it's a very complex estate to manage change within. In terms of some of the solutions that you're employing, are we going to be seeing massive solar panels on the roof of over there? I think when I say change, it has to be appropriate change in the context of this beautiful, internationally famous building. So we are planning to put solar panels on the roof of the South Choir Isle just behind me here. We actually secured planning permission for that in March to put 199 solar panels on there. Wow. Now that planning application didn't receive one objection. Because of all the consultation we've done over the past four years and because we've always said we would love to put solar on the roof to set an example, so by next Christmas we'll be producing about 40% of the power needed on the estate um, on site, which is amazing. To put that into context, that's enough energy to power about 25 average UK households over a year. And any excess power generated by the panels will be stored in underground batteries and can be used in the evenings for services and other events. Not one objection and 40% of the, of the overall power. That is an incredible milestone. It, it, it is. So, so the Minster is one of the buildings. Behind me is the uh, refectory which uh, His Majesty opened for us in April. Um, and that has the first solar tiles um, on a listed building in York. So, to, to me, you can't actually tell that that isn't a Welsh slate roof. It's actually generating 11,000 kilowatts of power per annum, and that's enough to run the air source heat pumps that are heating the building. So it's a small change, but it's a major shift in the right direction. And that building achieved um, an energy rating of at B, which is incredible for a retrofit building. Cathedrals have an impressive track record within the heritage sector and in 2016 Gloucester Cathedral became the first Grade 1 listed building to install solar panels and the 150 panels they provide 25% of the cathedral's energy needs. This was followed by Salisbury in 2019 but it's not just about solar panels. Newcastle Cathedral has an air source heat pump and underfloor heating and Canterbury Cathedral have a ground source heat pump and in fact Bath Abbey that's heated by the city's natural hot spring water.
so we've spoken a little bit about York Slate um, tiles on the refectory over there. We've got glass tiles on the top here. What about the centre of excellence? What kind of solutions have you got there? So the centre of excellence, which is under construction at the moment and will open next summer, has um, two solars um, on the roof. So at the Heritage Quad, we have traditional solar panels generating 50,000 kilowatts of power per annum. So that's almost enough to run the whole of that building. And the technology hub, which is in the old stone yard, the roof is covered in this incredible material, um, which fastens to the roof itself. And that will produce 60,000 kilowatts of power a year. So if there's anything that sort of reinforces the point we can tackle this as a, as a society, that's the, that's I, the I, I, I got to take hold of this. I mean, this is phenomenal to think that this It'll generate enough power to run all the offices of that building, so including the heating and air cooling in the summer, all from the sun. So uh, it's amazing. Oh my gosh, this is, I mean, we are truly living in the future, I think, holding this here. Now behind me, you can see some stonemasons at work. And I think that is the thing that is so incredible about the work going on here at York Minster, because on the one hand, we've got thoughts about how to make the buildings more resilient, how to operate them with more renewable energy, and then also, on the other hand, looking at how to preserve the craftsmanship and the skills that go into making and preserving a building like this, which is absolutely incredible. And so tell us about some of the big challenges, the big meaty challenges that have come along the way, especially as you know, we're talking grade one listed buildings here. Sustainability sits at the heart of our plan and I quite often say that uh, climate change is the biggest threat to the Minster now moving forward. Previously it's been um, dirty air, so post-industrial revolution affecting the magnesium limestone. Now it's extreme weather events, so wind and rain. We cannot get water off the cathedral quickly enough. And of course, the City of York Council and the Church of England have both set very ambitious targets for us to be net zero by 2030. So that's seven years away. So our plan has set planning policy to allow us to bring forward significant changes to these heritage assets that allow us to begin to decarbonise our precinct. Between museums, historic landmarks, churches, cathedrals, that adds up to a lot of roof space that could lend itself very nicely to solar. And in fact, many already do. Well ahead of the game was the Vatican. In 2008, panels were installed on the roof of the Paul VI Audience Hall and produced 300,000 kilowatt hours of solar energy every year, around enough to power 100 homes. Germany's Reichstag building and government offices conceal around 3,600 metres squared of solar panels on their roofs. The energy they produce is fed directly into the in-house network. And earlier this year, Pompeii and Italy installed panels disguised as terracotta tiles that blend in with the Roman ruins. All of these examples are great arguments to prove that retrofitting historic buildings with solar panels is possible, doesn't take away from the appearance and certainly isn't sacrilege. Please support our Stop Burning Stuff Patreon and help us to tackle misinformation about electric vehicles and clean energy. The integration of renewable energy and historic buildings is a really positive step showing that we can preserve our cultural heritage whilst also tackling climate change. And we've seen here today that actually with some careful planning, sustainability and heritage can go hand in hand. And if you enjoyed this episode, you might also enjoy these. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.